Welcome to the vlog. So, I had a conversation um, about how different it is to, if you're a teacher, right? If Or, I mean, coach in a martial art context, the implications of doing a class for a beginner. It is so different. And so fascinating, if you think about it with an open mind. And so, as a martial art uh, coach, which is, I guess, in my lineage, a, a word that we use often and, and it very well represents what you're doing in terms of guiding someone. Um, but obviously, I am a big believer and we are actually using the concepts of Sifu teacher and instructor as a respect uh, needed the only reason we use coach a lot is because when it comes to the actual training program I think people have all these associations of what other things mean and, and coach may represent a little bit better based on what out there is assigned right but I don't want to get lost in this now that's not the point Basically, the teacher is just someone who guides you through a training program having gone through it and can point and suggest um, by understanding what you're going through, suggests ways for you to overcome certain things. But the process of learning is always yours and you have to take ownership. All right. When you s so here's the thing. Uh, martial arts. Um, actually, I... I, I had a conversation with my mother. My mother is a wonderful, deep thinker. And she she and I were talking about this. And she says, hey, um, like learning to read. When you learn to read, it is tedious. And if you think about it, when you're a, a little kid, if it wasn't for the insistence of the educational system so that you can function in society, a lot of people would not learn to read. It's a tedious process and a lot of people choose not to go through it after trying and say, this is freaking ridiculous. And the payoff at the end of that very hard discipline is the enjoyment of reading, which is not only very helpful in society, obviously needed. Think about every society, but in ours, technological society that basically we do so much through the sense of sight with the interaction, communication. Um, you know, it opens so many doors. But not only that, the pleasure of reading. I grew up in a different time, right? I was born in the 70s. But I remember my mother having books. I, I was talking to my wife yesterday, Roma. We went to a, a library museum. It's just a delight to see these books from, you know, books from the 1400s and 1500s. And, and that, it just a delight of mem remember what, remembering what it was like to, to grow up among books and the enjoyment of reading. Um, but all of that happens after you put yourself through that process of discipline of learning. When, we, we, when we're little kids, we learn easier. But still, it's very difficult to learn to read. And in some languages, it's even harder, right? When you want to learn to read out loud, if the language isn't phonetic, it's very, very difficult. So, think about... So, learning martial arts is the same, except that you have less motivation. You're typically doing it when you're an adult. And I'm talking about adult martial arts. I know there's a lot of children in martial arts, and that's very good. Very good foundation if you can do that. Um, but, you know, you don't have... It's something you choose to do because you have an association of what it would be like to do martial arts. Invariably, the martial arts practice isn't going to be what you thought it was. Invariably, it's going to be, and even more so in my lineage and, and type of practice, a lot more nuanced and a lot more subtle than what you imagined. And the problem is, you don't really need it. And you know it. 
if you, I'm gonna say something bad. I'm gonna upset a lot of people. But if you really needed it, if you were in a situation you really needed it, you probably weren't coming to me for classes. <laughs> you know, if you really needed it, you probably wouldn't go to a mar uh, traditional martial arts school. And I'm not saying anything wrong. I'm saying which probably would happen in society. People that are attracted to a traditional martial arts school or teacher is because they are attracted to an association they have, and they want the discipline and to and to to be associated to a, a practice. It's not going to be what you think it is, and you don't need it. So when you start doing it, the chances that you stay, that you that you go through that initial phase of discipline, like learning to read, like my mom said, learning to read, are really low. And uh, what you're not realizing is there's a point in the class, in the learning where things start clicking. It's almost like it takes a while to learn the underlying foundation that allows you to have fun. If you think of martial arts as a way that's going to give you entertainment and fun and everything else, let it come by its own accord. Because if you tell someone you're going to become self-aware, it's very intangible for them. You don't learn to defend yourself. For most people, that's a nice concept, but it's not a reality that they can test. So when you try teaching them and it's something very nuanced and very, very focused on efficiency and very unlike what they've seen in movies, 180 degree probably, right? It's hard. It's hard to pull through that discipline phase. And after, when you have that foundation and you start playing with it, it turns out to be fascinating. It's like a chess game. And it's this exploration of this dialogue with someone through the tactile uh, sensitivity. And it's, it's fascinating. If you are a practitioner of Wing Chun, if you're a practitioner of Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, you know very well what I'm saying. It takes a while to learn that. But when you start learning the nuances of the tactile sensitivity, you love it. But if you're a practitioner of Muay Thai, it's the same. At first, there's very little you can do. And then you can start strategizing and you can start thinking of that match as a chess match and and study the opponents oh you know you do a jab and you think that guy every time I do a jab the guy moves to the left so now I know what to do like everything is strategy expressed through body mechanics whether you have more of a striking art or more of a submission art or anything but to get there you need a foundation to start having fun you need to pull through the initial phases it's like learning to read to have the enjoyment. Nobody, suppose you come to me and say, teach me to read. We've been at it for a week and you're like, I'm tired. I just want to enjoy reading books like people tell me it's fun. What you're putting me through is very tedious. I can't skip it. And beware of the teacher that advertises, you come to me as an adult and you'll learn to read in an hour and you'll enjoy reading. I don't believe it. And it shouldn't be. We should value that effort. And... Um, you know, that's also why I was thinking the first martial arts class, how different, how different it is. Now, it's a funny balance because look, if someone, you're not going to compromise the system. There's certain things, not everyone is made for a particular system. So you give them the foundation and if they don't pull through, then that's good. It's the way life chooses. This is not for everybody. But on the other hand, you, can't, you cannot do a class for a beginner as someone who already has that. So I actually am very attracted to that concept because, as you know, I'm very attracted to the martial arts as a way of analyzing how people learn. And so when you think about a first introductory class, it has to have enough fun for someone to say, well, it would be nice to do this because of the practice itself, but at the same time, true to the principles true to the principles that from day one they're starting to make you think about your body mechanics in a different way that's not easy that's not easy but it is fascinating and so there we go this is the reflection of the day be safe and uh, talk to you very soon